Greetings, everyone. Welcome back. We have been back at school now, I guess, for almost a week. I hope that you're getting nice and settled in your new routine for the new year. Glad that you're joining us. Everyone take a deep breath. Is the candle lit in the front of your room? Did you say the special new prayer that I sent to your teachers? If you didn't, take a moment now. Just pause it and take a moment. Great. All right. And now, if you're able, please stand. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. You may be seated, and teachers, go ahead and press pause for a reading from Scripture in your classroom. Water. It's everywhere, am I right? I mean, the earth is, what is it? Somebody in that classroom, you know, is it 80% water? Your bodies are mostly water, even. Most of the time when we have a major weather event, it involves water. Even when we're in a drought, water is particularly special, right? It's crucial to who we are. We can't live without it. Today's lesson from the Gospel of Luke, water is really one of the stars of the story. There's John the baptizer. There are all of these people. There's Jesus, of course. There's God and there's the Holy Spirit. But water, water is the big symbol. Water's the story. What do we use water for besides drinking and playing and watering our grass? Well, we use it to get clean, right? I mean, sure, we have hand sanitizer around here for days, but taking a bath or a shower, it's one of the fundamentals of living a life here in Smyrna, Georgia. Am I right? I don't know. Do you take your shower or bath at night or in the morning? Do you take it every other day, every night? maybe once a week, depending on your family's routine. You also use it to brush your teeth, I'm guessing. Some of us use it to wash our face, our hair. We need it. It gets us clean. And that is the kind of water we're talking about in today's story. Now, baptism, it's kind of a funny word. Baptism is a practice or a ritual that takes place in Christian churches to symbolize being washed clean from all the bad choices we might make, from all the times we might miss the mark. In the Episcopal Church, it's an option to baptize even the smallest of babies. What could they have ever done wrong? Well, the good news is that it's symbolizing all of the times in the future that that baby is going to mess up, right? It's actually really good news. Baptism is a way in the Christian church to say, you're okay. Welcome to God's house. You're good. One of the reasons I like the fact that we use water, simple water, H2O, to symbolize God's love for us and God's deep desire for us to strive to be our best and to be clean both inside and out is that water is really a pretty regular thing, isn't it? Like I said, unless we're in a drought, water is everywhere. It rains. There's the ocean. There's the pool. There's your sink. There's your tub. There's your shower. Everywhere we go, we can't escape it. It's a pretty basic thing in our lives, right? There's nothing magic about water. In the same way that Jesus was born a man, a regular man, 
Water is just water, regular water. But in a life with God, you put on those God glasses, we start seeing regular things in a different way. In a life with God, Jesus is no longer a man, a regular man. Jesus is sacred. Jesus is holy. Jesus is, in fact, God. In a life with God, water is not just regular water. Water has the power to welcome us into community and to make us whole, even when we make rotten choices, even when we hurt each other's hearts or even our own hearts. So in today's story, when John the baptizer, Jesus' cousin, is welcoming folks into the River Jordan to baptize them and wash them free from all of their bad choices and all of their sins, well, he's not really scrubbing them, right? Because you can't scrub off your choices. It's a symbol. It's a symbol. When John is saying, come on, get in this water, let me wash you clean, What he's saying is, join us. Join us in a life with God. Jump in this water. Remember that with God, you are as pure and as good as good old H2O. And then here's the real good news. Along comes Jesus, a man, a regular man. At least that's what they think. But John knows John knows that Jesus, Jesus has come to save us. And in fact, John is like, you don't need to be baptized, Jesus. You're the son of God. But the good news is that Jesus says, ah, yes. But just as much as I am the son of God, I am one of you. So baptize me and make me clean too. And I tell you what, if it's good enough for Jesus... It's good enough for me. So put on those God glasses, those God goggles that we sometimes talk about. And as you walk about, start seeing the regular things of this life in a little bit of a different way. Maybe, maybe water, regular water, can turn into something that, well, can change your life and help you make better choices and help you remember to see the God in one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now if you are able, please stand and join me in saying the prayer Jesus taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him to be your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. O God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be prepared for service and that our rest here on earth may be preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Amen. 
Oh God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Keep us safe with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by the hard things of this life. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose and what you want for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and between you now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace.